I'm Vince Tercy, and I am uh, the uh, every a lot of other things. Brewer. Oh, brewer. I guess. Yeah. Brewer. Yeah, do you and co founder. Do I have to do mine again? That's yep. really bad. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. My name is Mike Semenek, and I am the Creative Sensei. I'm also co-founder of Dissolver. I'm Clinton Walker. I'm the head of sales and distribution. Hi, I'm Ben Cersei, and I am the brewer and co-founder for Dissolver. Uh, yeah, so it all started maybe 10 years, just under 10 years ago. It might be 10 years ago now. When Mike and I were working at a liquor store in Austin, Massachusetts. And so uh, Mike and I, uh, got drunk and went to a craft beer festival and realized that everybody that was there was having an amazing time regardless of quality of beer but that the market was pretty wide open but we decided at that point that if these people could do it and have a great time doing it then we could probably take a stab at it and so we started homebrewing like crazy um, decided to open up a brewery and so we just kept going through different iterations uh, over the course of the next 10 years and I ended up quitting my job in finance uh, after I finished college and and then Mike just kept bouncing around to different design firms and the timing wasn't really right until I got down to Asheville. Um, I had worked at a couple different breweries at that point and then Mike had worked at a bunch of different design firms and so uh, yeah, it just, the timing was right. Mike visited Asheville once while I was working down here for uh, Burial in their new facility, building that out. And uh, immediately both of us were like, yeah, this is, this is the place that we're gonna be. So. Well, really, oh, man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Vince came to Asheville, met me. And then <laughs> everything really came together. Mike and I both had experience, myself with brewing and Mike with uh, branding, design, and yeah. running that side of it. Marketing, yeah, marketing, advertising, social media stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So we needed somebody who had experience locally uh, with sales and yeah, in terms of just running a bar in general. Um, he's capable of managing a much bigger facility with crazy uh, intensity and volume. So we needed that. And uh, Clint's pretty cool, so. Here we are. I, I, basically, I hyperbolized my experience, jumped on them coattails, had them. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. We pick and pull from our different experiences, and Mike and I are like big Tim and Eric and uh, like cartoon fans. Um, and so, like, just the surrealistic aspect of that just keeps our brains working. And then Clinton's the boots on the ground. So we get all of the weird shit that we're bringing and then like how is that comparing to what other people are doing and then the feedback that we're able to get from what other breweries are doing and how that's being perceived in real life um, in real time is, being, is able to be relayed through Clinton so we've got like a finger on the pulse while still maintaining our, a sense of weirdness so it's uh, fairly accurate um, but at the same time we've also made our name by producing a consistent line of super traditional English beers and super traditional lagers that we really don't pull a single punch on. And we uh, will age it for a, an appropriate amount of time or lager it for an appropriate amount of time, like a painstaking amount of ingredient sourcing. Uh, and then at the same time, we've done all of that while staying as local as possible within 500 miles of the brewery. So, I mean, that's super rewarding is being able to do everything that we want while not really sacrificing anything. It's been pretty cool. My goal is really to match the creativity that he's bringing through the brew house. It's just like, you know, him developing these recipes, like, you know, we're dropping at least two to three new products a week. And to match that with, with graphics is, uh, it's, it is a real challenge, but, but knowing he's motivated enough and working with other motivated people to make all these pieces come together really pushes me into overdrive to make sure you're like, I'm producing the work that needs to get done. I'm making it because, uh, you know, 
uh, there is a time factor to it and it's it, it is crushing but within that it, that crushing weight it does produce diamonds like it's really turning <laughs> coal into diamonds for us and these other kinds of gems community and the Asheville community in general is just super important it's definitely one of the biggest reasons that uh, draw, drew us to uh, this area and opening up the brewery here. It's, we have access to such awesome ingredients from from our mall, from Riverbend Mall. To uh, being able to source yeast right from a yeast lab that's right in town with White Labs. To working with other uh, manufacturers, suppliers like uh, French Broad Chocolates, getting cocoa nibs and stuff from them. They're amazing, smell awesome, they're just great to work with. I first met the people from French Broad Chocolates when they had their original facility, which was like I could throw a baseball from Burial's front door and break a window in their building. And so I've been working with them through uh, the whole time that I've been in Asheville, and so we all of our cocoa nibs and husks come from them and uh, we wanted to do something different and we've kind of been itching for something like that. So we've been doing some trial runs with white chocolate with them and we knew that they did marshmallow and their marshmallows are awesome. And we've been messing around with different marshmallow uh, styles and how to push that. Uh, and so this seemed like the perfect opportunity is work with someone local and uh, push another envelope that we've already been working on with marshmallow. Um, so it was like a win-win. Like My name is Jail, and I'm co-founder of French Broad Chocolate here in Asheville. And we started the business in 2006, and we opened our first retail location in 2008. And as we became enchanted by sourcing and by establishing relationships with different producers and partners, we realized that we needed to we need to make our own chocolate. So we were buying chocolate as an ingredient and that motivated us to learn the craft and source cacao and begin making chocolate. Uh, so on top of the chocolate, um, we had some of your marshmallows like a while back. I think I sent one of my guys to pick up cocoa nibs and he came back with cocoa nibs and marshmallow. And I was like, what? But then we tried it and we were like, oh my God. Uh, and we've been messing around with marshmallow as a, an enhancement for IPA. So we're going to do marshmallow to help in, uh, for aroma and mouthfeel, and then uh, white chocolate, I think, mm -hmm. we were talking about is like, depending on how much of the marshmallow character we get, we're going to bump it up with white chocolate. Like, you know, both, I think both in, um, you know, craft beer and in craft chocolate, creativity is the driving force. That's the motivation. That's the passion. Um, so when you get two businesses that are just kind of open-minded and like to explore and innovate together, um, you can make some really crazy and creative um, things that, um, yeah, are really exciting. Yeah. To be able to have access to something like this in our backyard and it's all fresh and we can have a, an actual conversation with a real person about it is great. And like you guys pitched us on the cocoa powder. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I think that coming together two um, innovative industries and innovative um, companies can kind of play um, yeah. and like, what if we did this? Let's try this. Would you try this? We have this product left over from making this and then we can just kind of figure out something cool, make yeah. something cool together. Yeah. One day a week is packaging and that is every Tuesday now. It was a struggle to get it to be every Tuesday. Mondays are typically a brew day and we'll kick things off. Uh, every day starts off at 7 a.m. So we'll mash in, uh, we'll have the grain milled the day before, uh, all the salts and everything weighed out. And so we mash in and then we start on the cellar work. Um, and that's cleaning tanks, moving beers around, checking to make sure that the beers that um, are being packaged on Tuesday are ready in terms of carbonation, uh, temperature, everything that we're looking for, clarity. And we use a lot of serving tanks instead of kegs. Um, about half of our draft line is serving tanks. So it's like, think of it as like one large keg. Uh, you know, you hook it up and then uh, it all comes out of one tank versus swapping out kegs. Um, so there's a lot of just like keeping our finger on the pulse and then adjusting day by day for what needs to be done. 
Um, if I said any two days are alike, I would be brutally lying to you. If I said any two weeks are alike, it would also be a lie. It's a lot based on product and what we have at the time. But we're brewing anywhere from one to four on average of three uh, beers a week. And we are uh, packaging three to four beers a week. Um, because now that we have the sour program and uh, like clean bourbon barrels, we're able to pull stuff from those a little bit more frequently. And we're also doing uh, mead, cider, and seltzer now. And then I'm leading the marketing branding side of things. So through a typical week, it starts uh, with like the newest releases we have coming out that week. So I'm preparing uh, uh, graphics for our social media and other uh, printed or our menu items and stuff, making sure those are all updated and current. And then in addition to that, developing the next brands and stuff. So labels are also being prepared. So that's yeah, two, three, four labels a week in addition to three, four videos that we produce for either pouring shots, uh, the highlighting the beer, uh, stuff that goes on to Instagram, Facebook, uh, all this stuff to make sure our brands uh, staying in the forefront of, of these different uh, platforms. By the way, Mike said pouring shots, not porn shots. No porn no, it shots. It sounded like porn shots. That's <laughs> gonna be cool, pouring shots. That's my after hours. <laughs> so. I think this applies to all of us where we've had some level of success working for other people, but then, you know, working for ourselves. This is for me and my friends and we're, you know, doing this for ourselves and for each other and that's an incredible feeling. Um, the most difficult part is that was that the other part of this question? Yeah. <laughs> me. The most difficult part of Clinton's job is me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that part of what is rewarding is what is difficult. And like, that's, I think it's as simple as that. Like, I like, we all like the challenge. We wouldn't do it. My, Mike, especially, like, there's no money in brewing. Um, <laughs> there's no money in being a manager of a bar or restaurant. But, a graphic designer, I mean, he should be making way more money than he's making, but he, he's doing that. <laughs> he's, it's too late. He's literally given us every dollar he's got. <laughs> the, the most rewarding thing is, I'd say every Wednesday, we, were, we release a new product in, into the zeitgeist. We are super stoked on some traditional styles and stuff, and, you know, it's, it's always hard when we can't convey that to its full potential so but sometimes we do and it's freaking amazing and people will get it and that's our our real goal is to make sure that every time we're introducing a new or an old traditional style that it is hitting and if it's not hitting this time we're gonna try it again and if it doesn't do that time we're probably gonna do it again <laughs> because we love this stuff and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know that leads into like our tagline it is brewed until surreal and that's that's not like saying everything we do right at day one is amazing and beyond belief it's it's more of our motto of like we're gonna keep making this stuff until we find it to be as, as amazing as possible and you find it to be in that same boat like we it, it's it's yeah our motto to keep going forward to make things the best quality as we can make it. That's, yeah. yeah.